All right. And uh, here we go. Hope everybody's doing good. Thank you for all your comments. Please like, subscribe, share my page even. Share it to some social media site. That would be really cool. Help me out. Get more subscribers, you know. <laughs> it's hectic. All right, guys. So, um, before I get into the Desiree stories and the Desiree years, that's what I'm going to call them, the Desiree years, um, which are very colorful and hectic, I wanted to um, let everybody first hear that this coronavirus is bullshit. I mean, I went to Big Five. Not only did all the freeze-dried stuff be out, but there was a line to get ammunition, okay? And when I mean a line to get ammunition, it wasn't just the normal... It was, we're in line. All of us. Oh, okay. I mean, really. Fucking pathetic. I'm not kidding. Person that was in front of all of us, he's like buying everything from 308, 9 millimeter to 22 and 12 gauge and anything in between I left out that they even carry it. Big five, he got. The sales clerk said, you know, I sure hope you're not buying all this just because of the coronavirus, you know. And uh, he's like, oh, no, no. And he's there with his, like, assume his son and his wife, his family. Okay. Um, you need to have your either passport, birth certificate, or the new driver's license to get it. And I was just... I don't know, milling around because I wanted to get some dried milk, which I'm looking for to save. And it's gotten so bad to where when you try to get toilet paper and people are hoarding at Costco, we're talking Costco, not just like one little six roll thing, but you know how Costco is, guys. We have an issue, man, big time. The way the president spoke the other night, He's not a politician. He cannot have that veil that they have. He was actually so flipped out by whatever they had disclosed to him that he had to tell the American public and populace of what's up and what our game plan is and whatever. But no matter what he said, you could look at him. And as a result of that, We've got people buying up ammunition. Okay, I didn't know that we were going to war, but at any rate, I mean, we all need to be safe. You know, I do have a few thousand rounds myself, allegedly. Um, but to make things happier, Todd, this is where we're going to start. There's a gentleman, great meth cook, somebody that would actually go the extra distance and I'm going to get him on the show and interview him himself to speak. He served five years federal time. He was indicted on some of the biggest conspiracy charges in the state of Nevada. I was involved with him as not only as being his very close friend and his, I guess, you know, force. Um, but I got involved to the point to where I was actually getting the cursor ingredients. Now, if anyone knows about it, it's a challenge. It really is to go through all the hoops. When you're not got, we're not on the Smurf level here. We're talking industrial shit. Todd had stepped up that's why the title is like instead of the witch the lion the witch in the wardrobe this is the meth cook the fed and the ephedrine so he has me working with tommy jenkins and that's a name that you'll hear later on in the stories of desiree as well as todd a lot so I'm in San Bernardino. Mind you, he calls me out. This is when he wasn't in prison. I was with Lynn. 
Now, people know about the linear, so it's easy to put the two together. Now, being with Lynn, you know, like I said, I would be selling 25 pounds of pot every other week. I was roofing, making three, 400 a day. Just crazy. I didn't care. I had our condo still in Las Vegas and our friends out there. But this new business venture that was insane. Like, when I first went out there, I could tell things had elevated, okay, because I met the guy, the Fed, the DEA, and I was going to include his name in this, but I'm not. I'm going to think it's better to be smart than stupid. As you can tell, my language as well, I'm trying to do a tour. I can be monetized if that ever happens again. However, we'll just call him Bruce. Bruce was at Todd's house. I drive all the way from Thousand Oaks. I'm tired. I come in and, and hide everybody. And there's a new guy there I face. I'm like, hey, what's up? He's all, hey, what's up? He introduces himself to me and then reaches out and pulls a 45 out and puts it on the table. Now, everybody knows what that means. So I kind of thought that was a little weird. So yeah, I... I pull my piece out and put it on the table. That's what I guess that meant because he knew I was packing. And we start talking and I'm like, so... And I wanted just to kick back and go and party, really. I just wanted, you know, it was like, come on, man. I was like 30 years old at the time. You know, let's have fun in life, right? Okay? So, instead I'm sitting at a table... And about ready to take a drive all the way across Las Vegas to some house that's sheeted up where they are storing this oil at. Now, I'm learning little bits about this, about ephedrine, the pooling, the caps, the tabs. These are when the tabs still had the ephedrine you could buy, the mini thins. You didn't have to smurf then. You could just go out and get it. What Todd did is he'd go to the um, feed store. He'd go to... Um, Gold and silver stores. He, Todd was whacked. Pool supplies places. He'd buy 500 gallons. The whole time, Bruce had been planted there. And his thing was to go around and get people established to where they have the lab so he can bust them for not only manufacturing, but meth, you know, that's a big charge to step up, if anybody knows. Like, with heroin and everything, there's, it's a 510 to life, 10 cap and stuff. Not with meth, man, it's doubled. It's like 50 gram is 10 to life. Um, and if you're caught with, like, manufacturing, you better have a good lawyer, especially if you're caught manufacturing in an active lab. Okay? So what Bruce would do is he would go around and he'd gather up these people that just wanted to start doing this shit. Like Todd, we were talking. We were into cocaine. We, we sold coke. That was our thing. And he wanted to move into this fucking crystal, which was whack because I finally found out it was Tommy Jenkins that got him into it, that was pushing him into it. And like I said, that's someone that's going to stay relevant in the stories because there is one based on them. So everybody that's following the storylines at all, they're, st they're very closely knit, okay? Um, kind of made Todd start doing this shit, showing them the money, how much money could be made in it, how much it, didn't, it was nothing, and how you can make it. And that's what Todd liked to make things. So for him to get the opportunity to play with chemicals and shit, he's a little kid in the toy store. I've watched him. I've watched many people to where a pseudo-fed catches fire. Okay, we're talking about boiling charcoal fluid. Yeah. And, you know, you wig out and it's all up in flames and shit. I've seen him, like, just... Not even panicking, nothing. This guy seriously throws something over it. Does I mean, that's all you have to do, guys. People always freak out and they don't know. All you have to do is just cover it. 
That's it. But it turned him on. So he got to the point to where he was asking me if I could work with this guy, Bruce. And the first night, because when, you know, you just meet somebody and everything, and I was very on it. And apparently, so was Bruce. Being a fed, he knew me better than I knew myself, which was scary. We drove over to one house, and we went and got the oil, and I made sure not to touch the stuff, not to enter, not to be anywhere near close to a conspiracy to commit or a RICO could be put on me because that's what they were getting a lot of us on was the RICO, okay? Because that racketeering and organized crime and corruption shit is serious. That's how they fuck you. My father taught me that. So we get back to Todd's house and Todd asks him, hey, do you have... And he says, well, Bob didn't want to come in the house. He didn't want to do, he, and I was like, wait a second. This guy was trying to really involve me in this shit. I was ghosted until then, at this point. And then I, I took Todd and said, what the fuck are you doing? What, what, what's happening? He runs it down on me and I say, time out. We're getting rid of Bruce. I know very little about this guy to nothing and I care to not know anything about him so that was it with him as far as my relationship went okay how that transpired down to how Bruce was told or whatever obviously created a riff but Todd was so into doing this shit and showing how he was at this level which was not good and this is why they wanted to get him for 10 and more, but man, he's lucky. So anyway, he says, I want you to go to San Bernardino tonight. And meaning me and Tommy Jenkins. Tommy would go with me. Bob, I want you to go to that place I took you to in San Bernardino. You remember that place? And we picked, and I said, yeah, I do. I know where. Because we had been dealing with these certain two cooks from the Inland Empire. Soon to find out it was nothing but a setup. We had driven in and waited. Thank the Lord again that addiction or habitual idiocy doesn't rule in me. I leave before it gets too dark as the crowd's immersing on us and gunfire opens up because they knew we had thousands of dollars to buy all, these, all this shit. And I found out how all that got out was Tommy. Tommy loved to shoot heroin. Now, remember, I had learned about that through Frank and the China White stuff. So I knew. I didn't fuck with it. I snorted a little bit, but I didn't fuck with it at all. I was there to do business. I had thousands of dollars on me, and I needed to get the red foss and the black iodine, iodine allegedly. Um, upon barely leaving by our lives... Because Tommy had to go get heroin and tell whomever that we were. He told them everything. I mean, he was a piece of shit. So I drive back. And now I'm back in Vegas. And now, mind you, it's in a 12-hour period I've driven, right? Okay. Todd, I tell him everything. He looks at Tommy. Is that true? Tommy's all coming out of his bullshit. Okay, now mind you, I've already smacked Tommy before. I've had to take care of him and a lot of other issues, which will be brought up in other stories. That's why his, his name and character is relevant. Okay, I want you to go fucking back there. Now mind you, by the time we get back there, it might be 6.30 or 7 in the morning. The sun might just be coming up. Tommy says, we have a place I need to stop first, Bob, before we go there. And I know already what's going on, okay? Someone that we know wanted a boat to um, meet its insurance end, and we picked it up on the way out of town, and it was just staying at the boom town. And it was weird, man, like no security, nothing, guys. I mean, I don't want to give anybody any ideas. This is not for that. Okay, so it's just closure right now. We pull up, 
just latch this thing up and drive right out. And I'm kind of freaking out. I'll admit it. It got by the state line and an eight ball later before I stopped, you know, freaking out. Pretty gnarly. So we pull up in San Bernardino with this boat now this time and this shit. And I'm packed, strapped to the max. So is Tommy now. Tommy had been, you know, he's a pretty weird guy. Now Tommy's not nice anymore, let's say. And he's a really mean person, okay? Mexican guys come out. They come up. Tommy fucking just pulls the gun right on out. And I'm just like, oh, fuck. This is not going as like it's supposed to. He actually wanted to do this. In his mind, he had already had it to where I'm going to fucking tell this motherfucker how it is. Keep his mouth shut. Now, we almost died because of his fucking tweaker blah, 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 shit. Well, he accomplished that. But by doing that, what he did was actually, it's pretty cool. It made the guy's brother, now that's the guy that was getting the shit, know that these guys are for real. That we weren't no level. Okay. He comes out, introduces himself to me, introduces himself to Tommy. And you know what he says? He goes, I don't really want to talk to you. I'm here to speak with him. Tommy got a little offended. He goes, I don't care. Go inside with his brother that he, remember, shot. Okay. Right? We take care of him, in other words. Pretty close to the scene in Blow. When you've got, you know, Boston George. And later, me introducing him to Pablo. And Pablo's like, uh, no, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to him. But he's saying, no, I got to do this because he's my partner. Well, it wasn't like that with Tommy and I. I could do that. And he knew I was able to call that shot and do it. And I had the money. Okay? So we leave. We go to this funky head shop. And this is in like San Bernardino, like Inland Empire, Tweakerville. The, the little town where, that I keep them telling you where we went, was so, the whole place is full of tweakers. Man, it was weird. You got people sweeping solid dirt yards with brooms. Got You got me. But we go and we pick up, okay, the red phosphorus, black iodine. Now, the whole time, though, this dude, the bigger guy, the move-up guy, he was already in connection with Bruce, the DEA, okay? So this was all kind of in the workings to get that lab going and okay yeah pretty fucking close pretty fucking close so i give the guy all this shit he tells me i want you to come back and and i come back and i tell him look you know any bullshit and he's like no dude and I, and I go okay I, we're straight and we were i came back he gives me like two ounces of the most bombest meth you've ever fucking seen that's that i could it was warm when in people that know what dope know what i'm talking about it was fucking warm and it had the little red balls of foss in it okay so i knew that it drip water had dripped that's what that is okay how i know these things it's allegedly um so I put Tommy in the car, barely walking. I'm just, at this point, I'm slapping him in front of people because he's just, <laughs> and he's smacked out. But I got to be careful because I'm alone. It's just me, Tommy, and this wacko. That guy, I'll, I don't even, I haven't even brought up his name or character because he's meaningless in the story. Seriously, he might as well just been a piece of wallpaper or the cigarette that I'm about ready to smoke because as soon as I smoke it and put it out, it's what? Done. Okay. So we leave. Mind you, we have the boat, everything, and we go. Boom. We're on the freeway. We leave San Bernardino. We're headed towards Ventura. Okay. I had had enough of Tommy by this point. Okay. And he's starting to snap out of it. He's starting to get pissed, you could tell sick, angry, belittled, who knows what the fuck else, but I didn't care, I, I didn't, 
I got back to my location in Thousand Oaks. I left the boat, the trailer, the uh, four by four, whatever we were driving, the vehicle, all of it up the street at Feldman's parents' house. <laughs> I didn't give a fuck at this point, guys. I really didn't. And our families all knew what we were doing. We're all corrupt. I don't want anybody to think they're better than the next because they're not. Okay, come on. I mean, I found out that boat allegedly had been taken to the Channel Islands Harbor and sank for insurance money. The 4x4 just was rolled right back into where they launched the boats. and Just, I don't know how they get away with this shit, but they do because they know people from the States and stuff. Anyway, so I take this meth. And now I realize, because now I'm not doing this shit. I'm a, I know what's going on, my surroundings. I can tell we've picked up a tail, okay? And a good one. Because, of course, I couldn't lose him or shake him with that boat. But little did he know how the minds of Minolta think what counter-surveillance training and everything do, it came into play. I call a friend of mine from up north that had worked with Tyranny in the band. He had enough faith in me to know I was not bringing him down here to get busted or, or a, a situation that was going to be called what we call fuck all. He drives from Santa Maria to here. Okay, and he got here pretty quick because I he asked me. He's the kind of friends you have that, you know, I'm going to be here tomorrow. In other words, because they're that loyal to you, and vice versa to them as I am. Bill shows up at my door no sooner. Okay, looks at me, and by then I was noticeably disturbed. You could tell I was noticeably shaken a little bit that I had been through. A little too much within 24 hour period, don't you think? Bang, 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 bang. The DA guy in Vegas, when I get there and I'm going to get this oil and trying to, he's trying to implicate me and all this shit. And Bill tells me to what's going on. Well, I tell Bill exactly what's going on. I say, there's a possibility. I go, I really need your help. I've got to shake this fucking tail. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I have to do it. Okay? Now, I have a secret place that has a tunnel, and that tunnel's a drain for the water for the city. That drain goes in the back of a property, okay? I've used this drain before, but I haven't used it in 10 years. Well, I didn't think twice about using it that day, okay? I told Bill, I want you to meet me in the La Branca. And he's like, he's not from here. So he's like, La Branca. He's like, yeah, right. and I, there's no cell phones. There's no, you know, gurgle, Garmin, whatever. You can't fucking do that back then. It's map and, you know. So I drew him from a location I was at. Exactly where to go. And what manhole cover I would be popping up at, okay? Because you have to understand, we have the long things that go in and pull them up. And we have all this shit. I'm not kidding. Down to, I can go up a phone booth and or pull and pretend I'm GTE. And, oh yeah. At any rate, I don't need to talk to you about that. At any rate. <laughs> Bill was there waiting for me. Like a fucking Trojan. It wasn't like I was there going, fuck, is he going to be? No. He was there like he was supposed to be. Okay? Now, my vehicle hasn't moved from this spot. They haven't seen me. They think I'm still here. Because the person that came left by themselves. Okay? Which I found out later he had just, he'd been pulled over. Right when he left the location... And was right up the street. They pulled him over. Pretty weird, huh? Just coincidentally. So whatever. He's there. 
I pop the mount hole, I look, and I'm like, fuck, bro, thank you, thank you, you know, fuck, dude, it's one of those moments in life, you guys, to where you're, you're free, but you still know there's a possibility you're not all the way out of the woodwork yet, okay, and he even said that, he was like, oh, chill out, dude, we're not fucking out of here yet, which was true, Okay, we're leaving, we're gone, I think, and we're up by Ventura now, passing Silmar, the freeway, the bridge, the overpass, okay, and a vehicle comes on, it already been, they were like sitting there waiting, watching to see if this guy, because they knew where he lived, they knew what, they knew enough intel, they had someone on the inside, and I knew who that was, and I'll, I'll explain it later in the story, later. Fucking weird. I didn't hide. It wasn't like I was hiding in his car or anything. No, I was just being normal, you know? And that was my mistake too, okay? Because we got followed. We got picked, they picked us up again. I couldn't fucking believe it, dude, that we had gone through all this shit, dude. I crawled through wall. Just, okay, imagine that you think everything you're not. You're fucking not. We get tailed all the way to Santa Barbara. Bill, that worked in the construction industry, had been working up near Michael Jackson's Neverland Ranch up there in Santa, Santa Ynez Valley and stuff. He knew this area real well. He knew a way, which is really bizarre because this is fucking weird. And if anybody knows this route, please comment and leave it. It's where you get off at State Street and you'll go, all the way up straight street and you keep going and then you get off and it's one lane road on each side and it takes you all the way up in the fucking middle of fucking nowhere it led us off by um G galita or gaviota it was way up there he lost them okay so we get to santa maria i got this merchandise um todd doesn't know about this merchandise meaning it's all mine the guy, you know, this is weird. The guy, like, he blessed me, in other words, for being a solid you know, stand-up dude on how I handled this whole thing, okay? Apparently, he's fucking, like, high up there in this game that I was involved in decades ago, allegedly. Well, now I realize it's time I could party or whatever, so I do a little of this shit. Oh, my God. Not only me, but Bill. We were both seeing shit coming out of the walls. It was so strong, so intense. It was the craziest fucking thing I've ever been around or done. Uh, even other people that did the shit, you know, they were wigging. They were like, oh, fucking hey, I could have swore it was like bad at PCP in it or something because I knew that feeling and it kind of felt like that, so... I fucking ended up doing it. And when you do it, you wig out. Well, I wigged out. I decided to bury the shit. Keep like about a half ounce it was. Call my dad. Yeah, out of all people. Yeah, dad. Call my dad to drive up from this location and pick me up to drive me home. He's like, what the frick are you fond ghoul up, you, you freaking idiot? He was mad. Okay, but he didn't come by himself. He brought my mom with him. So I get picked up by my mom and dad, twacked out of my fucking head. All right. My dad's like, you got a lot of explaining to do. And we got a long drive, so start. Okay. I told him everything that I just did, the whole story. Okay. By the time I got here back to this house, my dad turns around, looks at me, he goes, you know, not bad, not bad. <laughs> my own mouth was always a little cracked, but that was my story. It's Todd, you know, the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. It's not. It's the meth cook, the, the fed, and the ephedrine. I mean, it was gnarly, you guys. You know how everything goes in life. Well, I hope you enjoyed this story. Thank you for subscribing. Seriously, everybody. Your comments, it's really amazing. Um, 
the downloads you've even purchased of my music. Um, it's like I've been totally reborn. And I got to say, a lot of it has to do with Ryan Leone. I watched some of his videos and I had this mindset. People that know me will tell you 12 years ago, 15, when YouTube first came out and, you know, I first had that page. And when I get to that story, you guys will know about it. But I thank him a lot, man, because Ryan, dude, you fucking inspired me, bro. And um, I hope that I can make my next step. As you can see, I ain't too fucked up. So maybe I can totally clean up and get things right, just like they're supposed to be, and, and really enjoy life, you know. And thank you for letting me share these stories with you guys, you know. And Fangul, Takata.